Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of the Crazy Town Podcast. My name is Jonas. I'm your host, and I'm here with TNT Dynamite, the explosive one. Uh, TNT D I N O M I G H T. What's up, Jonas? Oh, nothing, man. We're doing a special, special same day drop podcast today. Yeah, this is a a very special episode, and I guess with a little bit of pretense, I. Uh, a lot has been happening yes in the world absolutely from the pandemic to the senseless killing of a restrained black man on the ground yes. with a knee on his neck yes until he perished the police officer who you know are sworn to protect and they're supposed to be the first responders that are supposed to protect us from uh, the bad element right um, I, I, I honestly, I found the, I found the actions reprehensible and I usually don't watch videos of that nature, but I have. And since then, so many more videos have come out with the protests that have been happening, um, looting and the, the police reacting in a way that is, that's then less than humane in a lot of cases. And I approached Jonas and I said, I think we should say something about this because I have a lot weighing on my on my head and a lot weighing on my heart that I felt like I just needed to get out. And it is very hard for us to, to get out here and and do protesting ourselves. Um, there still is an active health concern. Uh, there's scheduling issues. But I feel like if we can do anything, we can at least spread awareness to our listeners through this venue, be it small as it may be. It is the only thing that right. we have. We don't have much of a voice, but we have at least a little bit of a voice. There are some people who watch our things. So if we can get this word out to anybody, it's better than getting this word out to nobody. So I'm not an emotional person. I don't really know how you've dealt with this on an emotional level. You, uh, the Jonas. collective you of the listeners, or you, me? I, I guess you, Jonas, as a person, or even the, even the listeners. I'm not sure how they how they've reacted as well. But uh, I'm not an emotional person. I've called myself a consummate uh, stoic, and and I'm not going to make this about me. But I have I have cried literal tears at at my work uh, in my in my room. When I see some of the things that I've seen on Reddit and in social media, and that is it, it, nothing has elicited an emotion like this in me in a very long time. And it's not necessarily even out of anger a lot of the times, but when I see my fellow Americans with a different skin tone supporting a movement that I feel has been an issue for a very long time. It, it warms my heart to a point that people are finally taking notice, at least in, in my generation. Now, this these movements have been going on for years. And to turn a blind eye or to say that uh, a certain grouping of people or to say that black people in general are being a little overly sensitive or this could have happened to anyone this ain't the time for a yeah but this is not the time for that and i'm not going to treat it like that i've experienced it i was fortunate enough to be welcomed into a community of white people who accepted me but i can tell you right now is that if you didn't, don't think that racism didn't run rampant in the small little ohio town that i grew in or grew up in you're fucking sadly mistaken some of the people who i considered my friend to this day it started out on some racial shit 100 percent. i've been called a nigger i've been treated like one but I don't necessarily think that it's cool that I had to just grit and bear it. But then if you don't, then you get perceived in another way. The whole thing that really, that really gets me 
is that it took a perfect storm for this to come, but I'm glad it's here. Do I agree with the looting? No, I'm sure you don't either. No, absolutely not. <clears throat> um, yeah, the the protest, the, the why people are protesting, I think is wonderful. Yeah, going out there and looting and like destroying things. I will never think looting is is a good idea, regardless of the cuss. But people are pissed off, man. Oh, and yeah. You, and honestly, I, I say f fucking you can't tell people how to act when they're angry. No, because, I mean, not everyone... Like, me and you are both people who are very... We can we can control ourselves pretty mm -hmm. well, emotionally, mm -hmm. for the most part. Some people, when they get riled up for whatever reason, happy, sad, angry, they have trouble controlling what they do. And if there's a large group of numbers and somebody starts doing something like smashing windows or whatever, peop things can get out of control quickly. So, I guess I should start off by saying that one man's two is another man's ten, right? And I can, can never what you mean by that. And I can never tell that, another man how to react. What I'm saying is that one person is going to react with a certain emotion or a certain action to an action differently than another person would. Some people get more excited when they hear certain triggers. Whether it be good triggers or bad triggers. Right. Happiness, anger, whatever. Exactly. I just You can't tell another person how to act, react. Secondly, I want to say is that these lootings are being, I think the term is glamorized. Maybe not. But a light, a spotlight is being shined on them. This is the vast minority oh, absolutely. of what is happening. Yeah, there's there's hundreds of thousands of people protesting and there's not. There have been protests <laughs> in every state. In the country, in our, not in our country, but yeah, in our country. There's yeah. been every, there's been a protest in every state in our country, yeah. but there has not been violent looting or even violent responses necessarily by police in every state in right. the country, but it, it's happening. Right. I had, uh, I talked to someone from our hometown. They said they were even doing protests there. Yeah. As far, even just little, small, like towns. It, it, and honestly, it, it warms my heart, man. It does. I, I really wish there was more I could do. Um, I suggest that if you if you feel moved by, by what's happening, that you should find some place to either donate or find a way to, to spend your time uh, fighting for it in whatever manner you see fit, because I ain't going to tell you how to react. So if you want to go and go break the doors down to CVS, hey, that's you. I'm not going to. Yeah, <laughs> Right. Yeah. You want to go out there and break some shit. You're accountable for your own actions at the same time. Yeah. But I, I just want you to, to look for a cause that, that fits your, your something that you can do and, and, and get into it. And if you feel like you want to turn this podcast off at this point, then you can do that, too. Yeah, absolutely. And if you feel like we being overly sensitive as, as black people, then you can shut the fuck up forever. <laughs> right. <laughs> absolutely. There's been a lot of yeah buts out there, man. Um. No, uh, there's actually been a lot of a lot more of like, oh, maybe we were wrong on this before yeah, in the which, past. Yeah, there's a there's definitely a lot of that. It's it, you know, it, and I find myself a, a subject to the same thing because the media pushes the negative out there or the negative aspects of the thing. They're gonna push the looting. They're gonna push the people who are like, oh, Drew Brees said something a little crazy. Look, man, we got to focus on the positive, because if we focus on if you focus on the, the negative, you're going to you're going to trend that way. I'm focusing on the positive activity that is out there, but it is very hard when you see these people who are doing these peaceful protests being attacked by the police uh, unprompted. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Or when you see a, a president who in one breath says that he stands with peaceful protesters and then uses pepper balls and flash bangs to move them for a photo opportunity. I'm not a political person. I've never been a political person and I never wanted to use this, this venue to push a political agenda. Right. But, but I, I can't stand in the light of, absolute and utter hypocrisy and and stay quiet it wouldn't matter if it were the left or the right i'm not going to stand for that hypocrisy and i think it's ridiculous
Jonas has spoken out. <laughs> Jonas don't give a fuck. He'll let you know right now that he don't fuck with Trump. <laughs> <laughs> he will. He's, you've, you've alluded a bunch of times. It's cool. Well, it's funny because um, I always say funny. I mean, I, more I, I don't even know what the word. It's not funny. <laughs> um, I, I've never really been a political person either. Like, I'm always like, hey, you know, you do your thing. You know, whether I voted for you, whether or not, like, you know. Yeah, it's this, the this illusion. is like the first president that has like invoked like what yeah. the fuck is happening right now because it's not even about political it's about human decency as a person yes yes it's just like yes. how can you be so just ignorant to, yeah. you know what I mean it's like like I wouldn't care if he was a Democrat I wouldn't care if he was an independent I w- it wouldn't matter it's I'm talking at basic human level decency couth like yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's 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 bad as a human. It's bad at the job. If I was a doctor, my patrons are the patients. Without them, I do not have a job. So you have to <laughs> right. you have to have a certain relationship with them where they feel comfortable with you. If I right. am if I work at an auto body shop, the customer, I have to make sure that to some degree they're happy, but obviously with not without like just like taking it up the ass or anything, but you to a certain degree you have to cater to the customers. As president, it's the people of America. Whether that person be a white American or a black American. The term African American I've always de- detested. I feel like I can get the fuck out of here. I feel like it it teaches separation of the two people. But we are all Americans. Right. I was born in I was born in Ohio, but I'm an African American. Jonas was born in Ohio, and what are you? <laughs> are called me a, a white American or no, whatever. No, or, there is no yeah, term American American or whatever. Yeah, there is like, no yeah. term. Yeah, we both immigrants to this country, so neither one of us are yeah, either one of those. Both things. immigrants, yet we were both born here. Both descendants. They don't call me a European American. <laughs> yeah, we are both descendants of immigrants. Exactly. Whether we liked it or not. Right. How how we got here, whether one way or another, we both were immigrated to this country. And we are both Americans. We are born here. We've lived here our whole life. <sighs> man. Yeah, it, man. It, 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 it does. It warms my heart, honestly. I'm not here to even speak about being angry because it's not really what I'm feeling. I'm, right. I'm definitely more happy than I am angry. But the emotion is still there. And it's it's just something that I, I had to share. Yeah, man. I, how, how are you handling this, though, Jonah? I've been talking my oh, ass it's, off. How it's you, fine, man. Like it's, it's fine. normally, normally, dude. Normally, it's I'm the one fine, who talks man. a ton, man. Like I'm I'm here to listen too. It's fine, man. Um, <laughs> I like like you said. Um, I'm per, for them. I mean, I always talk about how excited I am about stuff. Like, in you know, so I do have like a range of emotion. Like as far as like a normal everyday, like you're more of a even keel stoic. But like it, there's I, mean, I have a couple thi- things like I f- feel of, is like the happiness that like finally people are taking the movement seriously about, you know, and, and it's not just black people or minorities or whatever. You see like corporations and like white Americans and ev- everyone coming together to on this cause where, especially like, I'll talk about co- companies in a minute, but um. But at the same time, like seeing the way that people are being treated makes me sad, dude. And not just the way that like people, like minorities have been treated ever, just the way that humans are being treated right now. It's like you see people oh. out in a park oh. on their knees going, oh, blah, blah, we're here. We're, and they're just not doing anything. And you see yeah. Oh, yeah. officers walk up and pepper spray them and shoot them with pellet guns oh, you see yeah. press getting attacked and you're yeah. like what the fuck is happening in this oh, country yeah you all getting treated like niggas now that's what's happening out here and the shit is and that shit makes me so sad man i see a kid kneeling speaking maybe not the most articulate but powerful words because it's coming straight from his heart and then he's taken into custody i see people kneeling on the ground and being pepper sprayed that shit's infuriating to me. And yeah. the motherfucking revolution is televised. There, All of these cases that are caught on tape, they're being documented. There's a website you can go to. The amount of cases being brought against these police departments that are 
one hundred percent abusing their powers. Oh, absolutely, they are going attacking pregnant women in cars, pulling kids out of their cars, college students, and tasing them. Th- these are these are not isolated Just events. Just running at people and pushing them down as hard as you can when they're like, it's not. It's one thing to be like back up, back up. It's another to like literally run at them and just full bore bull into them and push them to the concrete. These are adults yeah. dealing with other adults, right? And like every action invokes an equal and opposite reaction, right? That's physics, right? But it it, it fits in this situation where people ain't gonna take that shit if you keep doing it, right? Yeah, you can keep pushing and pushing and pushing, and you can keep threatening us with with uh with with uh military. But what what is that going to do? So you're going to push us to the point where we're like, we're not going to take the shit. Then you're going to bring the military in. And what are they going to do? You're going to start shooting Americans in the street? Right. Is that what you're going to do? Pull some Tiananmen Square China shit from the 60s. Just start shoot, running people over with tanks. So you're just going to start shooting us in the street. And then what the fuck do you think is going to happen then? Because the right to bear arms is legal in this fucking country. Right. I can go to Walmart and I can get guns just as easy. Right. And then guess what? How many people in the military? Motherfucker, there's way more civilians yeah. who would not take motherfucking tanks in their streets or motherfucking troops just roaming the fucking neighborhood. There's way more of them. Yeah. It is not a winnable situation. It's not even about. And then. Mm, mm, I think the biggest form of solidarity that that a lot of these police departments could have. Is not is 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 to honestly lay down your fucking batons, lay down your batons, lay down your stun guns, lay down your vest, march, walk with the people, be out there in case shit jumps off. Fuck that! Let the shit jump off. Uh, really? What does it fucking matter? Yo, the way you get changed is if there is no opposition. If if the opposition goes away and the opposition says, "Hey, we stand with these people," and shit's gonna pop off until something changes. We ain't policing. Police go on strike. Don't go on strike because uh, one of your your fellow uh, police officers is out here killing people. Do not go on strike because of that because now you're concerned about your job and your paycheck. That job and paycheck is nothing compared to the life of the people who reside in this country. And that's, that's really what we need to realize is that it's not about protecting your job. Right. If I fucking cared about that, then your 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 whole way of thinking is already fucked up. Yeah, I just, uh, mm. the military man, I, they are not to be used against the people. No, and and th- you had that one general who spoke out about it. I just I I don't know I don't know what to do, man. I no, don't know what to well, say. I guess what I was what I was thinking when it, when I said be there in case shit pops off. So it's gonna pop off. So, so no, but like so, say the police are like, you know, we're not gonna be out here doing this because they shouldn't be out here hurting motherfuckers in the streets, anyways. But say like they're walking with the people, and then people start destroying an entire city. They should just let everything get. I bet you some change will fucking happen. That's true. My whole thing is that we dealing with a president that that got fact checked on Twitter and the next day he had a policy locked and loaded. Yeah. Locked and loaded to change the way that social media was handled. Yet the country is on fucking fire. (laughs) Literally. Literally on fire. Yeah. And he pokes, he pokes those people's with, he's poked those people with sticks. Yeah. It's, it's, it almost feels like that, I don't know if him in general or whatever. It's like, it almost feels like, like you're talking about, you know, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. It's almost like they're trying to poke the bear enough that it causes them, that, that like a revolt comes back, that it causes them to pull out the military. Like he wants that. It's just like, we keep poking them, we keep poking them, we keep poking them, we keep poking them. Eventually, they're going to come at us, and then I can declare martial law, I can put the military in the streets. He can be a dictator, like Sun Tzu. The Art of War has spoken about this, John. I don't know if you've ever looked. Into I've that, heard but, of the <clears throat> Art of War, but I have not. Uh, Sun Tzu's Art of War says that you got to make your enemy defeat themselves. That's the easiest way to win a battle. So, you make them look bad. 
You sent provocateurs out there to incite this violence and peaceful protest. One person starts smashing windows. Hey, they're smashing windows. And emotions are high and, you know, everything else. Like I said, man, we need good footage because that outrage is going to usurp any feeling of sympathy. Because outrage is over sympathy. Yeah. Yeah. Outrage is the number one thing that people or things that make people angry is the number one uh, emotional eliciting piece of media that people just intake and react to and dislike or like or whatever. And there's been a lot of outrageous footage coming out of these. Yeah, that's what it's, it took outrage over this situation. And, yeah, it took outrage over this situation to even get people on board to discuss to protest to this extent this shit has been going on oh absolutely i wish that i, I honestly uh, hindsight i'm not that person i don't really feel like regrets is a thing man i made every decision i made and i'm happy for the person that i am but i do wish that i had the the motivation to to act when i was younger right I wish I had more more insight onto what what actions I could take. I'm not here to to necessarily preach on it, but like I said, I, I, I urge everybody else to to get involved any way they possibly can. Yeah, yeah. I and mean, if you can't get out to the protest, but you can have a voice on social media, or you have a voice to talk, even just to talk to your family and friends, or any anyone you can talk to to talk about like why change is necessary and why and what has been happening or if you hear people saying insensitive shit tell them it's fucking wrong <laughs> tell them they're wrong for speaking like that you have to have be able to say something that's uncomfortable to someone that you care about yeah. to fight for the bigger picture that's right yeah. like if your parents are out here saying racist shit say hey that's not cool you shouldn't be fucking saying that and if they get mad at you it's because they're fucking racist <laughs> and they don't want to hear you say that's not right. You shouldn't be speaking like that. I don't understand how you can still be that way in this day and age, man. How can you be? I, dude, I don't. If only they love black people the way they love black culture, man, because this country loves rap music. And right. They, it's, one, it's like the most popular music there is. We like doing funny, silly dances on TikTok to, to, to the songs, man. We like to emulate rappers. But then when it comes to actually fighting for causes that are important to your, your favorite musician or right. that, that will resonate with the community that they stand for, that, that's not what we're... And, and you know, I, I guess I've never thought of it like that. It's like everyone embraces like yeah like rap music and all exactly. this stuff but let but let a rapper come into a community that isn't welcoming to it, mm. it's like it's it's like night and day they'll listen to rap music all day but let the actual rapper come there and then they'll treat them differently than they would treat someone mm. else and it's mm. like what the fuck man like that doesn't make any sense mm. yeah and and no, no one man is a monolith for for their entire uh, community, their gender, or you know their their race or orientation or whatever. But I don't know. I've watched enough Seinfeld, and I don't say anything necessarily. I don't say anything that would be considered racist against white people or any other race for that matter. Yeah, I I I don't either. I try my no. best at least, like unless no. it's like something I don't realize, you know. But that does not mean that it isn't a problem. Right. On on both sides. Um the problem is the systemic part of it where it's not even so much as is ingrained in the uh what am I thinking of? Economic but it, it, the social aspect of it. Let me let me tell you a little something, man. I'm gonna make this about me just for a second. That's great, dude. Jonas, when when we when we go out in public, we isn't like you and I together. Yeah. Okay. Or when I go out versus when you go out. When I go out, um, to a primarily white event, I'm concerned. That somebody's going to have a problem with me because of the color of my skin. Do you feel that way? No, that I mean that doesn't that doesn't cross my mind. Okay. Even even if I go to an event 
that's primarily like black or Hispanic, and I'm like a, one of the few white guys there. Mm-hmm. I don't have a concern that okay I'll be um, treated differently because of I'm all right. White. Now the reason that I feel that way mm-hmm. is because I've encountered it in the past, and I can understand that. So my guard is up. Absolutely. When we sit here and play Jackbox games where people get to enter their own name. I am concerned that somebody is going to put the word nigger in there thinking that they're funny. Do you know why I feel that way? Because it's happened before. Because it has happened to me in the past. Like with friends? Like at a party or something? It's happened to me in the past, oh man. It's God, not. I'm, I'm, I'm just speaking from frame of reference. Oh, no, man. that's fine. Yeah, I've just. Um, I am concerned when I see, well, never mind. I was going to say when I see a police officer, I'm concerned that I'm going to be pulled over. That's universal, I'm sure. <laughs> That's universal, I'm sure. What, whatever, uh, what, uh, you mean whatever race? Yes. Oh, when, okay. okay. When I walk into a job interview or into a building, I feel like I have to act in a certain way to, to influence the person to think that I'm not the person that they may think I am. In other words, the way that I speak currently is this is legitimately me. Like uh, I've been told that I'm very well spoken or whatever. I've been told that I don't talk black. I don't like that shit. Well, I mean, that's just as, I'm talking. As I talk. Ba- black. It's just as bad as. I mean, like by saying like you don't talk like a black person, you're that's like the most racist shit you can say. I talk like a black. I'm talking talk like, like a black person. person. I'm a black person, and I'm talking like myself. How do I not talk like me? Right. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I but, hate that shit, man. Oh. All right, but what I'm saying is like when I walk into a place, I I feel like I have to be an ambassador. Right. Right. I, I can see that. Yeah. Because there are, you feel they may already have a connotation about you that yeah. may be a negative connotation, and you want to immediately be like, "Hey, you're yeah. wrong about me." And I've, I've, I may have talked about it on on previous podcasts, but I feel like it is my my claim to any sort of success is the fact that I do kind of buck any trends that people may have about me. Mm-hmm. The job I have currently, I found out that when I first got the job that. There was a a lone female in the house who was very concerned about having a black man in the house all night with her, with her and her children. <laughs> and you were a professional being hired to go there. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm a professional. Yeah, professional. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's everything. All the papers turned out, dude. I'm from Ohio. I've never. I don't have a record. They whatever. Do background before. checks. They do. Your company very well vets you. To- so. Very concerned. Um, But now that person realizes that her initial feelings were wrong because I'm just a human being. We've had conversations. She understands that I'm not going to do anything to negatively impact her household or her children or any other relationships that I'm a benefit. And I just don't know if like just having those feelings of concern about being in cer- certain social settings or certain uh, work settings and just the idea of I should try to a lot of black people tell me that that's not cool is that I should just act like myself. I am, I feel like I am acting like myself, but they're saying, no, fuck that. You gotta, you gotta pour it on extra thick. Like as soon as I'm in a room full of white people, act extra black because <laughs> How else are they going to get used to it if they're not exposed to it? Uh, this cognitive dissonance, these ideas are what goes through the mind of a black person that white people don't necessarily have to deal with. Or think it's about. foreign to or, you. Or think about, yes. It's foreign. Now, I don't. Well, I guess, I guess where, where, where it is, my, where as, as a white person, mm. And tell uh, me, I, I when I go somewhere, I don't the I never think about how do I act when I go here, or so, how how are you going to be perceived, or how I'll be perceived. Like that doesn't cross my mind. Yeah. So to or like to be like when I'm when I'm around these people, I can act like this, and when I'm around these people, I can act like this. When I'm around or you know whatever, that doesn't even cross my mind. So like the fact for you to like say that like you know people tell you oh you should you should act like this or what you yes. know it's like 
the the idea of how how to present yourself is, is so ingrained in, in black culture and i don't feel like it necessarily should be um we we have stigmas there's a air of of criminality associated mm -hmm. with it and that's just that's just 100 percent what yeah. it is well because like i'm a big proprietor of in general of like act however the fuck you want but just be a good person man be kind be nice be like be respectful to other people i don't give a fuck how you act as long as you're nice and respectful and decent i don't give a fuck what else you do like <laughs> like it's so funny, man. As many white friends as I've had and taking them to my home or taking them to other black events, man, I've never once seen anybody kick them out. <laughs> right. <laughs> or tell them they can't use the bathroom. Never once in my life. And I've definitely taken some of my white friends to church events and yeah. to parties that they they were like they were like, Oh, this is I'm the only one here, huh? I'm like, Yep. <laughs> yep, you're the only one here. Have fun. <laughs> get out there <laughs> get, get out there <laughs> and they, it, it, it's just never popped off but I, <sighs> it's i just think it's sad and that's and that's what hurts me too yeah is that anyone any person of color has to think how do i have to act here to be treated like a treated well Ooh. or treated like a human being Ooh. we're like speak it white brother it's like if you were like if you if anyone even a white person comes in and starts acting a fucking fool treat get them the fuck out of there you know i don't care if you're white black asian whatever the fuck you are if you're coming in acting like a fucking fool being disrespectful being whatever get you get them the fuck out of there if you're coming in and you're nice and you're respectful and doing everything that everybody else is and just normal like being a normal human being why should anyone give a fuck what else is going on? How you're dressed, what you look like, how you're taught, any of that. It doesn't fucking matter. We're all people, man. People, uh, what pisses me off is people divide by color, uh, color, sex, da -da, when you should be dividing by are you an asshole or are you cool? Mm. That's mm -hmm. how we should divide the fucking country. Are yeah. you a good person or are you a piece of shit? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, kick the pieces of shit out. It's not. It's not. People. It's not a political thing at all, man. It's right. not. And I <laughs> look. <laughs> love America. <laughs> right. I'm from America, right. so exactly. I'm. A, it's not a patriot thing either. NFL just came out and said they were wrong not to stand with their protesters. <sighs> well, and, but you know what's fucked up about that is the whole time they said it wasn't about the protesting it was about uh, the national yeah. anthem yeah so basically the whole time they were just lying to the entire fucking country about what their problem was yep and then once again like i said what's more important a song tradition and Not well in the in the part about about the protesters in the nfl they never they, they made sure they made it damn clear it's not about the national anthem we love our country we respect our country it's not about the song when Kaepernick knelt, that wasn't the right way to protest. When Martin Luther King marched through Selma, that wasn't the right way to protest. Now that we out here in the streets in every state in America, yeah, that's not the right way to protest. Tell us, what yep. is it? How well, do you do it? Call up the White House, ask him. He'll tell you the right, right, right way to protest, dude. Hmm. I think that's one of the questions that the the lamestream media needs to ask. Yeah, yeah. If 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 what if what everyone is out here doing is wrong, what is the right way to get your point across? Because this shit has been going on for the existence of our country, and so what is the right way to protest? I equal parts hate twenty twenty and love twenty twenty right now. Twenty twenty <laughs> has been a fucking year it, dude it's halfway over man <laughs> almost yeah end of this month dude we have three weeks it's halfway over it's almost march april may june yeah so when the sixth oh, month is over God. yeah we're not even halfway you're right we're almost there fourth of july is basically like the middle of the year oh i love it dude it's fine it's fine it's 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 fine man it's gonna make us stronger as a country and that that's that's the most important thing um, the I more, hope, man. The more intolerance that we have for intolerance, whew, that's a bar. Here, here, <laughs> the better. The here's what I hope does not happen. 
What's that? Right now, you got a lot of people. There's a pandemic. There's a lot of people out of work. A lot of people have a lot of time. A lot of people have a lot of stuff. Everyone is like on board. I'm hoping as things get closer back to normal that people aren't just like, oh, I don't have time for that anymore. Oh, well, it's, that's what's going to happen. Right. And that's what makes me sad. That's what happened with coronavirus, man. What are you talking about? But it just that's makes That's what sense. happened with corona. We're like, I ain't uh, got time for pandemic. Yeah, dude. we dealt with that for three months. Let's move on to something else. We're right. pissed off. <laughs> but it's like, and that, dude, and that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to backtrack. So when I talked about corporations coming out and saying that they stand with black, I feel. Mm. And, and, this is a hot take. You can tell me if I'm wrong. I feel like that's all PR that they don't. That's I feel like that's a giant PR move. They can be so they can be like, remember when there were those big protests? We stood with the protesters. Like, where were you at three months ago, motherfucker? Like, where were you? Whoever heard you come out and say this three months ago? Now you're all on top of it. Like, well, I, I, Call I, of Duty's I, like, <laughs> we stand with Black Lives Matter. Like. You couldn't have said something stand up against systematic racism fucking six months ago? You would have been uncool then? Yeah, I mean, but hey, just because they did not say anything, I'm not going to necessarily say that they didn't. Because all these white people that are out in the streets right now, and a lot of these black people that are out in the streets right now, they weren't necessarily saying that, anything. That's true, either. I guess. But the corporation has the voice, where an individual yeah. person did not have the voice six months ago. That's true. If, like... If all these companies six months ago were like, you know what? It would be a great time to start pushing equality. Yeah. If it would have started at the corporate level, shit would have changed a hell of a lot faster. There wouldn't have needed to be protests. Like if you had companies like Facebook and Microsoft coming out and saying, we need to change the system. Rather than people going to the streets, shit would have happened a million times faster. Mm. Because those are the people that have a big enough voice to get to every person in the country all at once it, it always takes a push oh yeah absolutely. it always takes a push though and any any corporation or any person who you realize the error of your ways or you realize that you should speak out on this you 100 percent should yeah i guess it's better late than never but like hindsight's always 2020 like the, oh we should have been the best time to plant a tree is yesterday the second best time is today facts I guess that's like, that kind of goes with a lot of shit. Like, the best time to do a lot yep. of shit was yesterday. But if you didn't do it yesterday, yep. get it done today. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, um, it just, like, I love what's going on right now. I love that they painted Black Lives Matter on the fucking street going to the White House. That Trump has to look at that every fucking day now. Hopefully, from, you can see it from his office. Oh, do we fucking. It's just because, dude, okay. And, and here, and let me just tell you why. <laughs> So because, bad. because like it is it, it's in, in as as a white mm. person mm -hmm. to see people who act like that mm -hmm. it it makes me angry and that's why i speak out against him and never have spoke out against presidents ever because he is the epitome of like old white guy old institutionalism all this old he that is like he, you can tell he stands for that shit a thousand percent. Oh yeah, the Be verbiage that he used, man, calling the 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 rioters uh, thugs, right? And a lot of the a lot of the it's, verbiage in a lot of his tweets yeah, is indicative of somebody who has less than intolerant views, right? Exactly. It's like you may views. not be out here saying the n word, but you saying these thugs in the streets mm. when the majority of them are African American, Black Americans. But yet, when you talked about all the white protesters with guns a month earlier, you're like, be out here, be fair for these people. And then, then a month later, you're like, these thugs in the street. You're like, dude, mm -hmm. you want a perfect picture about how you feel about two different nationalities, two different mm -hmm. races in this country? Boom. Mm -hmm. There it is. It's imagine, dude, imagine if the first Black Lives Matter protesters in this protest walked out with guns like those people did in Michigan. Mm -hmm. Then people would have been shot in the fucking street. Mm hmm in a second. Mm -hmm. It it just it makes me mad, dude. It's a shame what's happened it's, in the Drew Brees, but I didn't I like LeBron I saw, James I saw the article, shut up and dribble. I saw something that he had to retract what he but I didn't see what he said. Mm. No, no, they were just like saying fuck Drew Brees in his in his in his hometown. And it was it was a travesty. But uh, you know, LeBron James should just shut up and dribble. <laughs> Very funny, man. It's it's a funny time we're living in. Um <clears throat> But I do take it with seriousness, and, and like I said, 
I I can already I can already tell I'm gonna cry more. <laughs> I can't. Yeah, dude. It, I was looking at my phone and I saw one lone lady in fucking Minnesota with a Black Lives Matter sign, white lady fanny pack, dude. Oh, I saw that. Like, and yeah. I I almost shed a tear on this couch, man. I like the picture. <laughs> it's just her skin. Yeah, dude. I saw that. She's just like she's just like down home, like living out there, just chilling. Fucking. I saw that. And I was like, good for her getting out there in her town. Like, but but when I see but when i see like i said people being shot or hit with batons or yeah that dude. shit that shit that shit elicits the, a different type of would it be emotion author- as well. authentic wait off author- authoritarianism or like totalitarianism or authoritarianism like of like that that one video the probably like that video that i saw of like some sort of national guard or whatever walking down a neighborhood and started mm. shooting fucking pep bullets at some people mm. on their fucking patty on their porch Mm-hmm. Like you're not even pro you're at home and you're on your patio and motherfucking some sort of mil- militized authoritarian regime is telling you to get in your home and shooting fucking rubber bullets at you. These rubber bullets are he- they're the size of your fucking hand. Yeah, dude. And they are, it- but they're home on their patio. Like what? Why? I just, yeah. it's like, wow. Yeah. Like that is, and that's what martial law would be. If they got their way and wanted the military to roll the streets. And my, my thing is, is like I say, is that the reason that these people are even out here is because it's their job. My job is not as important as my, my beliefs. So if it's going to be you just doing your job versus 10 times as many people doing it because they have a belief and yeah. they're fighting for what they feel is right. Mm hmm. That needs to be put to the top of the yeah. heap over law and order. Yeah, and and you know it's like, and I don't want to put every law personnel in the same category. Like I don't want to put any race oh, in the no, same category. No, there no. is good fucking cops out there. Yeah, one hundred percent. Like you know, there are people out there who are literally trying to help people and and everything but it's it's the same thing everybody gets put in a bucket you're you're a white guy you're a cop you're a black guy you're an, you're a mexican guy hispanic guy whatever it, but like in that in that in that's and like what I was talking about, that's how that's how i hate things are divided no it man should be divided by what type of human being you are yeah absolutely like i mean if the protests are peaceful then what's the need for even the cops to be there right right and they'll say it's in case something happens, but they're the ones that are in, in <laughs> instigating, kettling on a bridge, preventing people from going home. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, that's what you do. Mm-hmm. That's how that's how you endure yourself to the people that you're sworn to protect. Yeah, shooting people with rubber bullets who are on their knees. Right. Yeah. Oh, I've seen yeah videos of cop like cops literally doing like rubber bullet drive bys. Cops spraying pepper spray as they drive by crowds. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm just yeah, like, yeah. who the fuck? Like, you are the thugs. You're right. out here doing fucking rubber bullet drive bys. Like, what the fuck is that? How is that any better right. than anything else that's right. your. Dominate the streets, huh? Okay. Like I say, man, you're dealing with adults. These are adults trying to tell other adults what to do adults don't fucking take too kindly to being told what to do no when they ain't doing shit wrong right or when they're doing shit for a good cause right oh yeah absolutely Mm. yeah man it um it just it, it, it really sucks that this is going on during a pandemic because i feel like there'd be so there'd be even more people out than there are Yeah. Because, you know, there are still people who are like, man, I've had a lot of lung issues. You know, I can't really afford to get out there and get around a bunch of people that I could catch this disease and get sick and die, you know, or whatever. Yeah. And I respect that. I mean, your health I, your health is your health. You only got one health. And one life. You know, so it's like you can respect a cause, but if, if putting yourself out in the street with a bunch of people is putting you at risk of catching this disease, do something else. Okay. I see what you're saying. You're saying is that it would be a bigger movement. If it weren't for there'd be man. more people out there. I feel there's yeah. people who don't go because that's, they're like, I, my health does not allow me to be around that. That's many a people. thousand percent true. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because you yeah. know, it's, it's but a, those people can still do something. It's a thousand percent true. Yeah. 
Yeah, search where you can help out locally. Um, search and see where you can help out on a national level. If you decide to go out there, just take your own safety into con- in concern. Yeah. Uh, if you think that we're just talking out of our ass, then you can think that too. Yeah, leave comments, man. Start a discussion. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Leave your full name and address with the <laughs> N-word. <laughs> with the N-word. R- right underneath it, and we'll be sure to put it up on yeah. Twitter for you. Um, I saw something today um, online that it kind of spoke to me about like police... It's like, I feel a lot of police have the wrong mindset. It's like, it's like the police should be out there with the people. Mm -hmm. Serving and protect. Serving and protecting in case a bad person does something wrong. But they go out with the intention that waiting on bad things and looking for bad things to happen that aren't even bad. It's like it's like if you go out there ready to strike, you're gonna find something to strike on. Yes. But if you go out there with the mindset of like, I'm here to protect these good people. Yeah. You're and if something does happen, I'm here to help them. Yeah. That's a way better mindset. But I feel yeah. a lot of them have the mindset of like, shit's gonna happen today and I'm gonna get them. Like, regardless of it's black, white, whatever, they're ready to just <clears throat> fucking pounce, dude. And then they see one person doing something that could maybe be. <laughs> and and like I said, there's there's levels to this bad. Yeah. Um, I don't agree with anybody dis- causing destruction in your own community. But guess what? That shit can be fixed. Yeah. It can be fixed. And the whole issue would be fixed a lot sooner if we just had some legislation that was maybe enacted as fast as, you know, a problem with Twitter. <laughs> Right. If some legislation was to come down that was to change the system, maybe the shit would stop. It's not that hard. It's not hard to put a law into place if you want it to happen. Like Trump showed that he can do it. If you got people in every state in the country that are unhappy with the way shit is going on, I believe that they're telling you. We've told you. We told you in a peaceful way. You didn't like it. So now we're telling you in a way that maybe if all you can speak is fucking dog, I'm going to bark for you. <laughs> right. All right. So now we're telling you in this way. And yet you still don't want to do anything. Instead, you want to push back and say you're overreacting and you want to threaten us, even the peaceful ones, with militant action. That is ridiculous. It's counterproductive to to any of these people getting reelected it's counterproductive to of fixing the problem because you're not going to win you're not going to win that battle of attrition no it's going to come to a point where the people who are getting paid to do the shit are not going to have the same wherewithal or motivation to do it for the people who are doing it for the proper causes yeah um yeah i mean it goes back to like you saying like just because it's your job doesn't mean you got to like you know, you know they uh, job they, people go on strike all the they time. They say uh, the people, Nazis said they were just following orders too. Amen, brother. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like he, you could at any time say, "Hey, this is wrong. I don't want to do this." Yep. And uh, like I said, the call to action is already. It's already starting. You, we were talking the other day about the thirty-seven police officers that resigned after. Uh, two or three officers got. Yeah, I think it was a fifty-seven. But yeah, 57. A, a, a lot. Yeah, <laughs> regardless, with, a lot. With, with the elderly white man that got pushed down, started bleeding from the. I didn't need to see that fucking video anywhere, man. I really hope he's okay wherever he is. But those officers started quitting. Okay, so now police officers are realizing that through they are being targeted to a certain extent. Now I've with violence because. I'm not really hearing a whole lot about like people shooting police officers. No, not really hope if that does- shit starts popping off, it'll get real bad fast. Yeah, and I'm really hoping it doesn't yeah. get to that point. But these police officers are are being targeted in the media, and that's where you can get them. And yeah, and they're going to be like, "Look, this job ain't worth it." But guess what is worth it? The fucking right thing, yo. Racial and social, e- economic equality yeah. is worth it. Yeah, it's worth getting out there and getting shot in the face with a rubber bullet. None of these cops are getting shot in the face with rubber bullets, so it's worth it to them right now. Yeah, your job's a little harder because now you got to be out here and there's hundreds of people and you got to try to keep them all and you're pissing a lot of people off. But you ain't being shot. I don't know any one of these motherfucking cops that'd be like, "Oh yeah, I get shot in the face with a rubber bullet for my check," every every goddamn right. day. 
yeah, shoot tear gas at me. I'll do that for my check. Nah. They're going to be like, you know what? Fuck that. Unemployment sale paying. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, man. It's a... Uh... <clears throat> It's, yeah, it's a. Uh, That's a lot. I got it all off my chest. I feel. Did you? <laughs> I did. I got a lot off. Yeah, I like, feel um, good. Let me. I, I, good. I saw a video online. I want to ask what, what you <clears throat> thought your feelings are of it. So there was a video. It was like the side of a building that had been uh, graffiti during the uh, protests. Yes. Riots. I don't know which. If it was, I think it was during riots. Like there was a bunch of graffiti, and uh, there was a guy. He was a black dude, and he was organizing people to repaint the wall white put primer on it paint over all the stuff sure. and there was a bunch of people standing there some of them some of them were white some of them were black some of, and they were telling him that they felt it was bad that he was having them paint over the graffiti because that was like the voice of the people that were out in the streets and that that should be shown or whatever he came back to them and said I grew up in an area where bu where buildings looked like this all the time and people didn't like it there. People he goes, "Yeah, some of this graffiti is pro Black Lives Matter movement." He goes, "But that, that's gang tags. That, that's gang tags. We aren't trying to to glorify gangs out here." And if they they came out, they got their aggression out, they put they wanted to speak out and use their voice to use Spray paint on this wall. That happened. It's over. It's done. So if they want to come out tonight and spray paint up this fucking wall again, it's open for them to paint again. But guess what? We're going to come right back out here again, and we're going to paint over this wall again. Oh, uh, yeah. That's what you do. Right. <laughs> that's and, what you do. And, uh, and, the, and the, there was, like, all sorts. And the people were, like, like telling them that, you know, that it was wrong to paint over it and oh, stuff. It, it, look, I'm not I'm – not, trying to say is that illegal measures are good i'm never gonna say that <laughs> the facing public property destruction of public property uh assault none of these things are cool and i'm not advocating for any of them if that's how you want to express yourself who the fuck am i to tell you what to do right yeah but don't be mad when some shit pop off either you know well, right if you're out there spray painting a building and somebody comes and arrests you yeah no, what, what are you really surprised now <laughs> right what are you you surprised yeah if you're out here looting a store and a cop grabs you and throws you in jail <laughs> exactly like you're you're robbing something essentially. oh you, you want to burn down an auto zone well you're probably gonna go to jail yeah you want to <laughs> go into gamestop and put your copy of fallout 76 in the store <laughs> don't you dare leave your copy of fallout 76 in the game store up <laughs> oh jesus yeah but it's a uh, it's just and you see and you know just like any other big thing happening you see all sorts of shit online and it's hard to determine what's true what's not true yeah, what's yeah yeah um, oh and i want to say something i saw online and i don't know if you've heard about this but there's supposedly some youtubers out there who have put out videos with like um uh that their mm -hmm. monetized channels that supposedly if you like if you watch their video they'll donate the proceeds to different movements if you don't have any money i don't know how legit that is or whatever mm. but it was like if you don't have any money to donate and it's like an hour long video and it's all just like different um people of color like it'll either be them like talking singing or like showing art whatever and they're saying every every cent i make from this video i will donate to a cause and I don't know. I mean, I would hope that somebody wouldn't do that fraudulently. That'd be a really shitty person. But if you don't have any money, I'm sure it'll come out that some people have done this and they did nothing with the money. Yeah, um, yeah. But if but if you have no money and can't donate and want to do something, that that's what I, I've seen online is like an aspect of like, hey, go watch this video. Watch it every day. Just that's, let it go through. Let them earn a little bit of money. That's part of the reason why I didn't come with uh – I had, like, honestly, Jonas, prior to this, I wrote a whole thing, and I was going to just, like, recite it like a fucking presidential speech or whatever. I was like, Oh, you're nah. going to come out here and just... I was just like, no, I'm just going to spitball. Top of my head, I, I hit most of the major points that I had written out. <laughs> but the reason I didn't come with a specific uh, foundation is yeah. because I, I don't know which one is reputable. Right. I don't know, and so... You know, yeah. you, I mean, you, you do your due diligence that. on anything. Obviously. Yeah, yeah. You pick one that that resonates with you. If that's how you feel moved, if right. like and like I said, if you feel moved to get out there in the streets, that's just as viable to me. Yeah, and there, I mean, there's all sorts of stuff you can donate to funds that help bail people out that have been arrested from the protest. Yeah. There's, yeah. I mean, there's all, I mean, there's all sorts of stuff out there. 
Just to, don't don't start a podcast because you know <laughs> you can tell people about this one. That would be great. Yeah, tell people to come listen to our video. That's a shameless plug. I'm sorry, I shouldn't no. have done that. This but, is uh, way more oh, important. One thing than I that. do want to talk about before we get done with this episode is: Did you see the FBI? put out a thing like saying hey if you've seen people doing egregious actions make sure you submit and like it was just people putting together cop montages and sending it to the mm -hmm. fbi <laughs> <laughs> i was like oh that's fucking sweet sweet <laughs> justice right there if you see injustices in the streets make sure you report them to us it's just like <laughs> and then they try and then somebody tried to come out and spin it that that's what they that's what the purpose was to so show them if if the officers were being disrespectful that's what the purpose was yeah like if you see injustices by our law enforcement oh and speaking of the fbi if you're going out there to protest make sure that uh you put your phone on airplane mode uh make sure you have your phone off if you're not necessarily yeah. using it. Ideally, just don't take the fucker. They can nah, track the shit yeah, out of come it. Come on, Jonas. You're going to tell a bunch of 20-year-olds not to take their phone. <laughs> <laughs> Put your phone on airplane mode. Turn your phone off uh, if you're not going to use it or if you're going to do something questionable. Not that I advocate it, but right. hey, you know, be smart. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Easiest way to catch someone who does a crime is their goddamn cell phone. Because they're 100% pinging people's phones to the time of when certain things happen. Yes. And they will come for you. Um, oh, absolutely. So just just be be safe. Be safe. That's just a word of wise from uh, Dynamite, all right? Yeah, they, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, they can definitely find out who you are if you're there. Yeah. No, no, especially if your phone's on and you're on Instagram live streaming and shit. It's like, if you're out there on the protest, don't use it for your own fucking gain. Oh, my God. Can I talk about someone who's a piece of shit real fast? Are you going to say Logan Paul? Oh, he, you see that they arrested him? Yep. Ha, <laughs> good. I mean, this, this dude, oh, my God. I mean. There was a lady. She was a journalist for the Washington Post. Did you see this? This the one that pretend, pretended like she was helping? Yes. Yeah, I saw that. Trash. Funny, man. Trash. You know, people are getting their just desserts, and I fucking love it. Oh, I love it too. <laughs> it warms my heart to see. Wearing and somebody like <laughs> somebody commented on the video. They were like, "The sandals she's wearing right now are six hundred dollars sandals." Mm. She's out here with like a bandana tied around her nose. <clears throat> she and like it's like her. She's standing with a man who's boarding up a building. She's like you like has the drill in her hand. Somebody her, there's a man taking a picture with her. She hands the drill to him and goes, thanks a lot, man. And they walk to their BMW or fucking, I don't even, some some high-end car. And somebody's saying something about Instagram as she gets in the car or whatever. And within like 24 hours, all of her accounts were deleted. She fucking, I'm sure she got a lot of hate, dude. <laughs> Jonah's getting to his eat the rich bag. Dude. I don't want no, to eat the rich. That's, no. no, that's the divisive piece of shit humans versus good humans. Bag. Yeah, I know. She could, that could have been any race of lady. It, I don't care. No. She just happened to be an old rich white lady. But I wouldn't it, care if she was broke either. Don't it, pretend you're helping. Yeah, yeah. I guess that's true too. If you're eating ramen every day, still, go out there and actually help. Yeah, don't, don't, don't hold a drill even if you're broke. All right, you work at McDonald's, don't get out there and hold a drill. I don't. Unless care. you're using that fucking drill to actually do something. <laughs> that's so funny. Uh, yeah, man. So, I mean, is there anything else you want you want to say? I want to thank everybody who is out there, uh, uh, especially especially the white people. Honestly, I, I have to put a special thank you out there to every every single one of you. Um, yeah, the tears are usually when I see the white people helping out. Man, I'm not even gonna lie; that's where they come from. Cause you know, I just I've never felt s such overwhelming support from a community that has so little to gain from the help and you know i didn't even think about that by helping they you know they yeah it's just truly speaking out for the injustice in america in america and realizing that there is systemic racism in this country whether you like to admit it or not yeah the fact that you're denying it is more of an admission that it exists than anything else mm-hmm yeah, man, it's, uh, yeah, I guess I didn't think of it that way, like, yeah, but it's just like, it's like, yeah, there's not a lot to gain except for hu human respect. Yeah, that is, that is what, uh, that is the definition of altruism, and 
that that degree of altruism it it does it, it faith in humanity restored i'm not here to focus on on the uh on what on the bad and though i have we have talked about it a little bit i definitely want to focus on the people who are out there doing the right thing and I, me personally thank you jonas personally thank you thank everybody that, for standing up for things all right no more shameless plugs on this episode so Nah, you know how to find us. Yep. It's a crazy town. No, shameless plugs. We're done. Oh, okay. For Jonas. TNT. We are.